Is that what you were expecting when I first asked the question of what is love? Hello, welcome to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. My name is Charles, and this is the Coffee Side Chat series. So named because of this beautiful cup of coffee sitting on the counter right beside me. And I, I, I do hope you have a coffee sitting beside you. Conversations are always much more pleasant over coffee. And we are coming to you from the very hallowed halls of my kitchen university. My kitchen. Ah, what better place than the kitchen counter to stand around while we talk, laugh, and learn together, you know, as we kick an idea or two around while sipping on that very beautiful cup of coffee. And while looking at those ideas through the lens of what it means to be a Christian. I mean, how else are we going to grow in and live out our Christian faith? Now, as a reminder, Christianity is a following of Jesus that first and foremost involves a relationship that leads to studentship that leads to a life lived based on everything learned, not one or the other in isolation, but all of them all together intrinsically linked. Okay, so what idea are we going to kick around now? Well, let's talk about what love actually is. I mean, we've talked about love often enough here, and because of that, I begin to think it might be a good idea if we clarified what we're really talking about. I mean, especially in light of all the different ways we tend to throw that word love around these days. I mean, we say we love our car, we love our job, we loved our vacation, love our music, we love our pets, our friends, our family, and of course, God himself. So, do we mean the exact same thing when we say we love each of these things? No, of course we don't. But it's probably a good idea then to boil down what exactly we're talking about, especially when it comes down to loving God and each other. Now, you may be thinking, okay, okay, okay. Looking through the lens of a relationship. So, you're probably going to say something rather super duper obvious, like it involves a relationship. Right there, oh, doctor of obviousness. <laughs> well, yeah, you are catching on. It is all about a relationship. But the reason, the reason I want to kick this around, you know, is to see if our studentship can uncover anything that's maybe a little less obvious in that statement. Now, well, let's start with this. You and I didn't, do tend to think about love as an emotion, right? So I guess that's a good place to start. You know, kick around the idea of whether or not this is an accurate understanding of love. I mean, is love just an emotion? Or is there something more to it? Now, as I began looking into this, the first thing that struck me was that it seems to me to be much, much more than mere emotion. Indeed, based on what I found, I think that we cheapen love by limiting it to just being an emotion. No, 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 no. Hang here with me for just a second and let me explain. Now, you may remember that we've spoken quite a bit about the two greatest commands ever given, right? We do it regularly. Well, it is in these commands that I get this idea of love being more than an emotion. Uh, actually, it's in the very first one. That one being to love God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and strength. See, one of the things with which we are to love is our heart which entails all of our emotions and desires. So here's what occurred to me. Love cannot merely be an emotion. 
if we must use our emotions to love. I know, right? Indeed, if it takes our entire being to love God, then love cannot be any of those four things by themselves. Isn't that intriguing? Also, Jesus does say that all the other commands in the Bible are based upon these two greatest commands, right? They are based on love. Well, in conjunction with what we just discovered, this next question came up in my head. It said, well, is Jesus now saying that all the commands ever given in the Bible, are they merely based on emotion? That just doesn't sound right. Well, you might ask, if it's not an emotion, then what is it? Well, it made sense to me that if love is the basis for every command ever given, well, perhaps the Bible would contain, contain something that could help us form a definition or at least a good description of what love is, right? Now, this is where it gets interesting. I found two places where we are given that description in words that are very specifically saying that this is why love fulfills the law. Yeah, I know, right? Well, the first one is this, Galatians 5. And it's found in Galatians 5, I mean, where we are told that love humbly serves other people. And that is how it fulfills the law. And then in Romans chapter 13, we are told that the reason love fulfills the law is because it does no harm to a neighbor. So, love serves others and does no harm while doing so. Not a bad description, is it? But, you know, I admit that does seem a little bit incomplete. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if a more detailed account of love could be found somewhere? You know, one that says more than simply, it does no harm. I mean, how does it humbly serve other people? So I kept looking, and I found a couple of very interesting things. First, I found 1 Corinthians 13. And, and see if you think these uh, help describe or fill out what it means to to do no harm. See, here we are told that love is patient and kind and does not envy, boast, or become arrogant. It is not rude, not selfish. It is not easily angered. While it keeps no record of wrongs done to it, it does not delight in evil. It rejoices in truth. It always protects, trusts, hopes, and perseveres, and it never fails. That's pretty impressive, right? And then in 1 Peter, I found where love forgives. See, all of this certainly fleshes out what the phrase does no harm means, does it not? Now, you may be thinking at this point, okay? Well, that's all well and good, but where do we go from here? Would you believe that I next found a passage that tells us how we know what love is? Yeah! No, not kidding. This passage is in 1 John and tells us that this is how we know what love is. Ready? It is that Jesus laid down his life for us, and so we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. Now, as I thought about this, I realized that, well, not only is Jesus the complete embodiment of everything we've seen so far, he is actually taking this now to another level. Love spends itself for the benefit of others. Now let that sink in for just a moment. That's pretty huge. 
Love selflessly gives itself for the benefit of other people. And this is how we are to live, spending ourselves for the benefit of other people. Oh, and next I found a passage that actually starts by saying, and I quote, This is love. Again, not kidding. This passage is also in 1 John, and it says, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Now, mind you, in Romans we are told that He did this while we were still His enemies, while we did not know who He was or care who He was, didn't care anything about Him. So, we know what love is, because Jesus came. And this is love, that Jesus came, right? For God so loved the world that He sent His only Son, that all who believe in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. Right? Now, there is an interesting side note here, but one that will also tie all this into being very relational. Do you know what Jesus called eternal life? I mean, was it living forever? Was it never dying? No. And are you ready for this? In John, Jesus says that it is knowing the one true God and knowing himself, Jesus himself. Isn't that interesting? Knowing God, that does mean being in a relationship with him. And that is eternal life. So, love is that which makes it possible for the enemies of God to not merely cease being enemies, but also to become family, to enter into a relationship with Him. Yeah, it's more than an emotion. Okay, so putting this all together so far in one description, here's what we found. Love is more than an an emotion. That was hard to say. Love is more than just an emotion. It humbly serves other people, and it does no harm to them while doing so. And it spends itself for the benefit of other people. It is the way we should conduct ourselves. It originates from God, who, in Jesus, gave himself that we might be able to know him, that we might cease being his foes, and become his family. Is that what you were expecting when I first asked the question of what is love? Now, I've even found a couple of passages that tell us what our love for God actually is. (laughs) Believe it or not, it's also in 1 John. Now, this passage actually says, this is love for God. It says that our love for God is that we keep His commands and. Now notice, it's not just the keeping of His commands. There's this great big fat and right there. It says and. It is that the keeping of them is not burdensome. The keeping of His commands is not burdensome. Indeed, in John 15, Jesus tells us how the keeping of them leads to our joy being made complete. The two of those passages, that the, the two halves of that passage must be linked together for love. Now, a second passage which speaks of uh, what our love for God actually is is in 2 John. Now it says that this is love, that we walk in obedience to God's command. And his command is that you walk in love, that you love one another. So this is love, that we walk on the pathway of love. Now, 
before you go and say, well, that's a bit esoteric there, brother, think back over all we've been talking about so far, how love humbly serves others, does no harm, and does so much good, how it selflessly seeks the benefit of the other person. Doing all of this is walking on the pathway of love. No wonder in 1 Corinthians, Paul refers to this as the most excellent way. And it's no wonder he continues on to say that no matter what else we know, no matter what else we do, it is worse than meaningless if we do not love. So, to tie this all up together, our description of love is, has become this. Love is more than just an emotion. It humbly serves other people. It does no harm to them while doing so. It spends itself for their benefit. It is the way we should conduct ourselves. It originates from God, who, in Jesus, gave himself that we might be able to know him, that we might cease being his enemy and actually become his family. And, finally, love involves conducting ourselves daily in love, in walking on the pathway of love. For love is always active towards others. And did you notice, the Bible never mentioned our doing this if we felt like it. Feelings don't enter the deal. So, you know, I really don't want to beat a dead horse here, but it's very important to grasp this concept that feelings are emotion, is not love. Well, there you go. There you have it, and there it is. A very beautiful description of love. Yes, we've only managed to get a description of it and not a definition of it. And yes, there could be a much fuller description than we've had time to formulate here during our time together. I mean, it is a very vast topic, and we've done the best we could in this short episode. I do hope that you find this description to be a very good starting point for further explanation, exploration, for further exploration of love in the Christian faith, to see how it cannot be discounted as mere emotion, but actually seen for what it truly is, an integral part of our walk with God. And perhaps that is the best description of all. Anyway, until next time, may you continue to grow in your relationship with God, in your love for Him, and in your love for your neighbor as yourself. And, well, take it easy. Take it slow. And may coffee into your cup always flow.